Now himself for questions. Mr. Rubin, have you read the House resolution? Pardon me. Yes, sir, I have. Uh, what is your understanding of what this committee has been asked to do? Uh, my understanding is that the committee has been asked to review the incidents related to the Benghazi attacks and, and all of the, as you described at the beginning, in all of the aspects that it, it seeks. So your understanding is that we have been asked to look at all policies, decisions, and activities that contributed to the attacks? Certainly, that's our understanding, and, and, uh, and we, we support providing the information related to that. Request. That affected our ability to prepare for the attacks? But if that's the committee, if that's the, ultimately the decision. Well, you've read it, right? I mean, you've read the resolution, right? You're not disagreeing with my interpretation no, not, of the resolution, and, and are you? We defer to the committee's direction on, on how it wants to proceed. Including executive branch efforts to identify and bring to justice the perpetrators of these attacks? Did you read that in the resolution? Uh, sir, I don't have it in front, so I can't quote it. I'll be date. thrilled to get you a copy of the resolution. Sure. For the meantime, you're just going to have to take my word that it also says executive branch efforts to identify and bring to justice the perpetrators of these attacks. That's in the resolution. Can you tell me specifically how our interviewing witnesses is going to jeopardize the prosecution? Sir, the Department of Justice has been clear with us. I'm asking you. And, it was in your opening statement. I'm asking you. You tell me, a former prosecutor, how our interviewing witnesses that have already been interviewed by the ARB, already been interviewed by the best practices panel, and frankly, already been interviewed by the State Department. The, the video that you showed us last week, that agent interviewed the witnesses in preparation for a video. So if the ARB and the best practices panel and your own agency can interview people in preparation of a training video. How can Congress not interview those witnesses? Sir, no one has said that Congress cannot interview. You just witnesses. said that it would jeopardize an ongoing prosecution, and I just ask you specifically how. My understanding, and I am the chief liaison to the House for the State Department, is that our colleagues at the Department of Justice have been in touch. Specifically, with your who staff. told you that? My colleagues within the State Department who work on this on I'm, daily I'm looking basis. for a name because I, I've got to clear up this misconception <clears throat> that simply talking to a witness who's already talked to three other investigatory bodies that somehow or another Congress cannot talk to these witnesses even though apparently everybody else can. I'm curious how that jeopardizes an ongoing prosecution. Sir, I, 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 I'm not an attorney. I'm not a prosecutor. What I am is the chief liaison to the House for the State Department. And what I am conveying is that the Justice Department has told us that this could have an impact, and they would like to have a conversation with you and your committee about that. When you, do you believe that Congress has the constitutional authority to provide oversight? Every day I do that with my job, yes, sir. So you, you do agree with that. What, what is your interpretation of the phrase, all policies, decisions, and activities? In what context? In any context. How about contributed to the attacks? What is your understanding of all policies, all decisions, all activities? The approach that we are taking at the State Department is to provide materials to the committee at the direction of the committee. The request for interviews that you have reiterated here today, I am explaining that. The Justice Department has said that they would like to have conversations with the committee for the concern about the protection Mr. Rubin, the welfare you, of these agents. I, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something, okay? Because there are 12 people up here who may not agree on another single solitary thing, but every one of us agrees that we don't want to do anything to jeopardize the physical security of anybody who works for this government, nor does anybody on this dais want to do anything to jeopardize an ongoing prosecution. Okay, can we stipulate that, that nobody Certainly. wants to do either of those things? Certainly. Will okay. you also stipulate that you can talk to witnesses while preserving their, their identity and not jeopardizing an ongoing prosecution? I am confident that in the conversations between the Justice Department and the committee that those modalities can be discussed. Mr. I am Rubin, not the expert on Mr. Rubin, do you proceed. do you see the Justice Department at this hearing? No, sir. Do you know why they're not at this hearing? No, sir. Because we don't have any issues with them. That's why they're not here. You just cited a, a reason to deny access to witnesses that even the Justice Department hasn't cited. 
So what I want you to do is help this committee gain access to precisely the same witnesses that everyone else, from the ARB to the best practices panel to your own agent who compiled a training video, had access to the witnesses. Sir, I, I, as I said in my opening statement, we are happy to have the conversation with you and your staff on how to engage on this. And that is something that we're open to. We have never said no. Well, I, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, but, but I want to make sure that you and I have a clear understanding with each other. If six people observed an important event and you were being asked to write a final definitive accounting of that event, how many of the six would you want to talk to? Sir, it, it, I understand. That's not a trick question. I, I, I know it's not a trick question, and, and I understand the point, and this is why we are well, here. Well, if you this understand the point. This is why we provided the, the quantity of documents and worked in collegial uh, terms. Mr. Rubin, we're going to get, get to the quantity of documents in a minute. I noticed that you said 40,000. That's an impressive number. That's 40 copies of Dr. Zhivago. That's 40 copies of Crime and Punishment. That's a lot of, that's a lot of pages. 40,000 out of how many? That's our question. H how many documents? Is 40,000 half? Is it all? Is it two thirds? We have made a, a, a comprehensive search. And as you know, uh, the State Department spans 275 missions overseas, 70,000. I do. I'm not asking you to we bring are, any ambassadors we have back. A comprehensive amount of. I'm not asking you to bring any ambassadors back to search for emails. I'm not. Not a single one. How many employees does the State Department have? Roughly 70,000. 70,000? Correct. All right. And we have asked for emails from seventh floor principals. Do you think that that is a reasonable request when you have been asked to study all policies, all activities, and all decisions? Uh, in, in, your, uh, in your committee's December letter where it named principals, first, many, uh, in fact, all of those principals have, there are emails, there are documents related to them in that 40,000. And in addition, you and your Is it your testimony that we have all of the emails that we've asked for? Well, you and your colleagues prioritize sec former Secretary Clinton's emails, and that is our priority, as I stated in my opinion. Well, I would say multiple emails. If there are multiple email accounts, we want all of the emails. And okay? we, we agree, and we are, uh, as I as okay. I Well, you may have noticed my colleague from Maryland used the word glacial. Um, I find that, I find the use of that word interesting when you vote against constituting a committee, when you threaten not to participate in the committee, when you continually threaten to walk away from the committee, when you can't identify a single solitary person that you would issue a subpoena to, when you are prepared to have an ask and answered website before you got the 15,000 pages of documents that you just provided, when you expect members of Congress who are having conversations with people on airplanes to stop the conversation and say, let me go get a Democrat, you heard the word glacial. We're going to pick up the pace. We're going to pick up the pace. I have no interest in prolonging this. None. Sir, so I'm you're going to have to pick up the pace with us, okay? Absolutely, and this is why we're here today. Uh, we have made two witnesses available since uh, the fall of last year. We are prepared at any time proactively, as you and your I, colleagues know. I appreciate that, Mr. Rubin. Are you familiar with the subpoena that dates back to 2013 that the Oversight Committee sent with respect to the ARB? Yes. Okay. ARB is a statutory creation, you agree? Congress created the ARB? Yes, it did. Do you agree Congress can amend or alter or enhance the ARB? If it's uh, a statute, it's sure, Congress. Congress can change it, right? You agree Congress should provide oversight over one of its statutory creations? Yes, sir. How can we do that if you will not give us the documents related to the ARB? How can we possibly do that, Mr. Rubin? Uh, sir, first, of the 40,000 pages of documents that the committee has received, many of those are, in fact, related to the ARB. Mr. Rubin, I appreciate, I, I really do, I really do, I appreciate the, the word many, I appreciate the 40,000. I keep coming back to one word that's in the House resolution, and that word is all. So, sir, do we have all what, of what the we, documents? What we, what we have communicated to you and, and to your staff and what we've been grateful for is the committee's uh, explanation of its top priorities. And we would very be, be very honored to continue to have those discussions if the ARB 
uh, as as you've noted here, becomes the top priority. Well, that is certainly Mr. Rubin, we shouldn't have to pick priority. among priorities. You have 70,000 employees. I mean, what we're not going to do is identify one tranche of emails and then two months later go depose or do a witness interview with that witness and then two months later get another tranche of emails. When our colleagues on the other side, who, by the way, had no interest in forming this committee whatsoever, but are now ironically complaining about the pace of a committee that they had no interest in forming whatsoever, it's time for us to pick up the pace. So this, and I'm looking to you yes. to help me do that. And, and that's why we're here, and that's why we have continually engaged proactively with you and your committee, and we're happy to continue to do so. Okay. Cool. And I, I would mention the 70,000 employees are, are engaged in their jobs. I appreciate that. I don't want any policy. ambassadors, security guards. I don't want anybody taken off of an important job. But... Compliance with congressional inquiries is important, and if you have time for condom demonstrations or culinary diplomacy, I think you have time to comply with a legitimate request for documents from Congress, and I'm sure you agree. And with that, I would recognize the gentleman from Maryland.